So hi. today we are going to talk about what is ES Elasticsearch and why do we need Elasticsearch and how we can actually publish data in ES or save data in ES, how we save data in ES. So first of all, ES is a document store. ES is a database in which you can save JSON documents where each document will have a key and their corresponding value. In normal DBs, what you do is you create a schema in which each table will have, you will have a database which will have multiple tables and each table will have rows and columns. For example, you will have a column for user ID, you will have a column for uh, merchant ID, and you will have a column for age. And if you want to add extra information in SQL database, what you have to do is you have to alter this table. You have to alter this table and add a particular column. And as you need more and more columns, you have to alter the table every time. Now, in comparison to this, which is called structured database, we have document stores. Document stores. Document stores are the type of databases which directly save JSON in them. Or document in them and each document can have a key and the corresponding values for example the same data can be stored in elasticsearch or any other document store is user id and its corresponding value one two three h and its corresponding value 27 and let's say we want to add another uh, uh, key value we can add maybe count or let's say dob date of birth as any other values so this is elasticsearch so for searching in mysql we have to for optimize searching in mysql what we have to do is we have to provide indices we have to create index on a particular column i'm not going to cover what index is right now but index is a way in which we can retrieve or we can search on the data in a faster way. So in MySQL or SQL, you have to create index on a particular column. And as you uh, add more and more data in your MySQL, the size of our database increases. Whereas in document store, we're not talking about general document stores, we're talking about ES. So ES provides full text search. ES also provides indices on all the columns that you store until and unless you ask it to not index or not make the keys searchable by default. So for example, another advantage of ES is that one major advantage of ES is full text search. What does full text search means? For example, you have a paragraph which has many words in it. For example, you, you must have used Google. In Google, we have, whenever we search a particular text string in the Google text box, it provides us relevant results. How it does is that it indexes the, it indexes data in all the web pages inside a system. And whenever we search something on the uh, internet, for example, let's say, let's search it. Hello world. So what is happening is that it is finding all the documents on the internet and it is finding which are having hello as well as world in it. And it is then creating a ranking or score of all the documents and the document having the highest score is provided first and the documents having lesser score are provided later in the search results. So let's now search another string, for example, hello world India. Let's see what happens. In this, you can see that it is providing me all the results which are having hello as well as world as well as India. For example, you can see it here. It is providing me the search results which is having hello world and India. And the results now are provided in the ranking which are having all the words in it. For example, hello world India. It is having all the three words. Now let's search hello world India and America. Now it is, a pro it is providing results which are having hello world India as well as America. America in this case, it is using US, United States. It is using US as a short form. It is doing another thing, but we are concentrating on the full text search part. So this is full text search in which we have all the data that we want to uh, search in. It searches all the documents. Yes, searches all the documents which are having the different data words we have provided in the query. And it then ranks, the, ranks all the documents in decreasing order of their search results. For example, it, first search result is going to have maximum number of matching, uh, matching words from the search query. And in this way, the results are going to decrease further. So this is how ES searches on the documents. But in comparison, we have, the question is going to arise that MySQL or SQL now supports JSON data source in which you can have a column in a table which is having JSON data. Now, the question pops is that, pops in our head is that we can also store document or JSON in MySQL. How is it different from Elasticsearch or storing data or document in Elasticsearch? The main difference arises from the search algorithm that ES uses in comparison to the search algorithm on JSON that MySQL provides. Currently, the state of MySQL or currently MySQL software does not provide full text search or inverted index search that Google uses or Elasticsearch uses in its JSON format columns. So the performance of JSON columns or searching on JSON columns is very inferior to the search performance of full text or uh, search performance in Elasticsearch. That is the basic difference between why we have to use Elasticsearch in comparison to SQL in cases we have different type of search queries. For example, one of them is full text search. Another example is going to be now let's just uh, keep ourselves to full text search for now. Elasticsearch also provides other types of uh, searches like searching on latitudes and longitudes. It also provides uh, geo searching. These are the topics that I'm not going to cover in this, but you get the idea that it, it is a search optimized database. It was created only for searching. That's why it is superior, currently superior to searching performance of SQL databases. SQL databases are good for storing data in a transactional format. Transactional format. Or if you want to have transaction support, in a, then ES does not provide transaction support. SQL database provides transaction support so that your data is always correct. Whereas ES is an eventually consistent database. We're going to come to eventually consistent database soon. Now let's see what ES is. So we have seen that what ES is, is just a database which can help us store data inside. But what good is a database if we cannot query it and, and also query it in an interactive manner? For example, 
you have a database. You have lots and lots of data present in it. Now we need some interface through which we can query this data. We can always query this data using REST APIs that ES provides. provides. But those are not intuitive APIs. A person has to know how to write these APIs or Elasticsearch queries to query the database. That's why Kibana was born. Kibana is just a visual frontend for Elasticsearch. Any data that is stored inside Elasticsearch can be queried via an interactive UI. Via an interactive UI provided by Kibana. That's all Kibana is. It's just an interactive UI of searching in Elasticsearch. Now let's see what Lossash is. Let's say any service is producing data that we want to store in Elasticsearch. Now, one option is that this service owners can write their own service which can read the data and then save that data in Elasticsearch by, by calling Elasticsearch's REST APIs. But this is duplicacy of efforts because if anyone else wants to uh, ingest their data in Elasticsearch, they will have to write their own service and everyone will have to write their own service. Hence, Lossash was born. What Lossash does is, in very simple terms, it just reads input from input sources and then it can transform some, make some transformations and it can write the final data in multiple outputs. For example, Elasticsearch is one of the outputs. You can also save the data in any other state. For example, you can save the data in AWS S3 storage. You can save the data in MySQL. You can save the data in Cassandra. Similarly, there can be multitudes of input plugins. Your service generating data is one of the input. Another input can be, you can read the data from RNQs or RabbitNQs. You can read the data in Logstash from Kafka. You can read the data from, let's say, anything. You can read from anywhere and you can write from anywhere. So in all, Logstash is a data router. So, we can have, since we can have multiple inputs and outputs, all we have to do in Logstash is, Logstash is just a software in which you can give some configuration of where to read, what is the input, and what is the output. And if you want to do any transformations on the input, you can also do that. Let's see what input plugins are supported in Elasticsearch, or Logstash, sorry. Beyond on the Logstash website, you can see the number of input plugins that are supported by Logstash. These are the, RabbitMQ is one of the plugins, Redis, S3 is supported, Salesforce is supported, SQLite, Unix, XMPP. These are all the input plugins that Logstash supports. Let's see the output plugins that Logstash supports. Now let's see how we use Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana to make a very famous stack of software called ELK. In where Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Let's see what happens is that we have a service which are running pieces of code, and this code generates log files, in which logs is logs are being saved in log files. We want to make these logs searchable. We want to search meaningful data inside these logs. So what we do is we run a piece of software called FileBeat. What it does is that it reads these log files log files on the server. Log FileBeat is present on each server that is running. It reads these log files and then it outputs the data into Kafka. Kafka is one of the messaging systems that can use, other messaging systems can use, but for the sake of this example, we are going to go with Kafka. We have log files which have data in line format. And FileBeat reads the data and provides the messages in Kafka. Now we have Logstash servers running, which reads messages from the Kafka topic. And then it's Logstash responsibility to write this data in Elasticsearch. So FileBeat converts the data from line format to JSON format. And then the data in Kafka is present in JSON format. All Logstash has to do is, it has to read from Kafka input plugin and write to Elasticsearch output plugin. Now, once the data is successfully ingested in Elasticsearch, all we have to do is we have to create a Kibana dashboard or Kibana, which can connect to Elasticsearch. This is Kibana. Since we can query Elasticsearch using Kibana, we can interactively visualize as well as see all the logs and search through the logs, which are saved in here. So this is the famous ELK pipeline of logging simplified for you. Thank you.